And what we're doing today is we're, doing, we're finally getting to service this Audi TT. Before we do that, we, he basically he asked me to test the head gasket because he was unsure about it. The car does pump out a little bit of white smoke and it's a bit underpowered, so he's a little bit concerned about the head gasket. Now, unfortunately, this car hasn't been looked after very well in its lifetime. So that's why we're giving it a complete overhaul. Now, what we're going to do first is we're going to do a sniffer test or combustion chamber leak test. Very, very simple but brilliant. This liquid in here, basically, you're going to see what we'll do. It is now blue. If it changes to green, we'll know we've got a head gasket leak. Now, there's different tests out there that turn a different colour, but this one goes from blue to green. It's really as simple as that. So the way to do it is get the car heated up, and what we're looking for is smoke to come out of here, or steam, sorry. The way I like to do it, it just makes life a little bit easier. Because when you take it off, I like to completely, see that steam there now? The steam's coming up through there, it's gonna fill this chamber. And now, if this turns green, we have a head gasket leak. If it stays blue, we're okay. And unfortunately, it has turned green. Now, if you can see, I don't know if the camera's gonna show that up, you can actually see that liquid is not as deep blue as it used to be, and unfortunately, it is green. Now, that does explain a lot. It explains that the lack of power and the smoke. And you can see now, if the camera's gonna show this, it's kinda of hard to see. You can see now that's gone green. So unfortunately, yes, head gasket is gone. Now, you'll actually see, when I put fresh air back into this, so I'm just gonna squeeze this, you'll see this turning back to blue. Just see it now. Oh, you can just see it now, just kind of changing from the green to the blue. But I mean, with this stuff, once you've detected it going, I do throw it out, but it will change back to blue once fresh air gets into it. You can just see it now going back. Now the sun is in the way, so it's kind of hard to see. I'll put my hand maybe behind it. Anyway, so you can see it's going blue again, but um, yeah. Once, like I said, you can, well, I know some people that do reuse that stuff, but once it's turned green, I just throw it away and get the new stuff. You see how blue that is to compared to how green that is. It's actually, it's gone back a little bit, but there's that much stuff gone into it, it just won't change back properly. But that's what it should look like. So we can't service it now, so let's change the default. Yeah, it's pointless kind of servicing it now because, you know, the, the, the water and the antifreeze, there's no point me adding that. There's no point in putting oil in the engine because that's just going to get more contaminated. No point putting the plugs in because they're just going to foul up. So unfortunately, it is absolutely pointless servicing this now until we see what we're going to do as regards the head gasket. Now, but what we can do is we need to change the front diff oil the, oh, well, the, front, the front gearbox oil, the uh, differential oil for the rear and the transfer box. So we need to do that, which we can do. So that, yeah, that's what we're going to do now, today, instead. Sorted. Sorted. Right, so we're underneath the rear diff. Now there's two important parts to know. One important part especially. This front section here has got very special Haldec oil. This is the part, this is like a clutch almost. This controls the power to the rear wheels. Um, a lot of cars have them, they're all different kind of names, but on this particular one, it's the Haldex system. Now this oil, I can only tell you, should be replaced every service. They do reckon about 20,000 miles, but personally, I would just say every service. Now unfortunately, because I wasn't really planning on filming changing the oils, because it is just fairly 
quite simple and, and maybe a bit boring to film. I already did that the other day without filming it, but it's very, very, very simple. You have a little Allen key bolt right here, just there you can see, just there, which is 5mm Allen key. And all you do is you just drain that, let it drain down. Very, very simple. It uses, I think it's 0.25 of a litre. Best off getting it directly from Volkswagen. And the way I did it is I get it in like a silicon tube. And I put it in a silicon gun, just squeezed it up through there. This is the tricky part, because you have to let the silicon gun down and screw this up without losing too much oil. So that's the way you do it. Undo that, squirt it back in with a silicon gun. When you've got enough in, quickly take it back out and screw it back up. That is kind of the simplest way of doing it. But like I said, unfortunately, I've already done that. But that is essentially how you do it. Um, I think it's in the, the, newer, uh, the, the newer gearboxes as well. It's, it's, it's used quite a lot in um, Volkswagens and Audis and stuff. That's the stuff. Now what we can do is get back onto kind of the normal gearbox, you could say, or the normal differential. We have the drain plug here, and we have the filler plug, which you just can't see. Well, you might be able to see with my fingers. Let's just turn the light on. So there's a filler plug here, which is just above here, and we have the drain plug there. So first thing we're going to do is drain it. Right, I'm using all genuine Audi oils for these um, because they do state that you do need to, whether that's true or not, but that's just the way I'm doing it. Um, this is 7590 fully synthetic. Right, so what, what I'm using, I'm using genuine oils. So it's just best to check up if you're doing this with your number plate or your chassis number just to get the right oils because depending on where you live, depending on what model of car you've got, depending on what age of it is, it all kind of uses different oil. The tool to take this off is a H17. You can see it's like a big huge Allen key almost. And that just simply... Now again, you need to make sure it definitely goes all the way in. And it's not going to round because this round you're in trouble. And hopefully it's not too tight, which it is. So I'm just going to use a slightly longer 3 8 ratchet and hopefully... Now, you have to be so careful, I hate these because they're... I haven't had one snap on me yet, but they feel like they're always about to snap. It's just not the nicest feeling in the world. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to get Sean to undo this to see if he can do it without getting covered in oil. So, before you start, the easiest way to do it is keep pressure up as you're turning and when you think you've got all the threads out quickly move your hand let the nut drop because it's not going to go anywhere but don't don't try and hold the nut but keep it keep your pressure up on the bolt up on the nuts and when you think you've got it low enough just quickly release your hand and see if you can do it without getting covered one hand is usually easier Push up and twist, not too much, but just so you, it doesn't leak. So keep pushing up and twisting at the same time. And when you think you've got it, move your hand really quickly. Mm -hmm. If you could just see the concentration on his face at the minute, people. Let's just see if we can get it. Where are we? Now. Go on. Oh, you're close. You're close. Is the oil? Yeah. Right, he's close. Oh! Ah, you got a little bit, but that was, that was bloody good. Only a bit shows your finger. Just a little bit. Right, I'm not 100% sure on how much this, is t this takes because, to be honest, you don't really need to know because of the... Because when we undo the, the filler plug here, which is one you can't quite see on camera, once it starts coming out of there, you know you've got the right level. So it's not really vitally important to know how much goes in here because it will kind of tell us itself. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to let that completely drain off. I'm going to see if I can get you close. Now... Where my finger is, you just, there's no way I'm going to be able to film. Where my finger is, that's the filler plug. So I'm going to undo that and then I'll turn the camera back on. See, this is another problem with not either topping up your oil or replacing it anyway, especially in rear diffs. I don't know if the camera's going to show you that. There's all metal 
bits of all well there'll be bits of all sorts it's really rough this is a this is a little magnet to pick all the bits of metal up but there's a hell of a lot of bits of metal so you can just tell unfortunately this car hadn't been looked after and this is the problem um now i've just cleaned that now and as you can see the difference but yes a lot a lot of metal filings which i don't like to see because that metal has to come from somewhere so it normally comes from bearings and stuff like that so we're going to have to keep an eye on this rear diff and uh, hopefully it's okay now what I've actually done is I've got a little uh, stack of batteries there's uh, five, uh, four batteries there and I use that as like a jump start thing so um, they're all connected together so we still have 12 volts and that's what I'm going to use to power my little pump which you can just see is here so we have a 12 volt pump from Lidl's I featured this a lot on my channel it is absolutely fantastic for the price that it was which was absolutely nothing even if it breaks now the amount of use I got out of it is, is absolutely phenomenal so what I'm going to do is literally turn it on it's going to be simple like it's pumping from the tub I've got down below which is the right fluid for this and like I said make sure you get the right fluid and then Close, we're close, and bingo! So much easier and quicker this way. But what I have to do is every so often just gonna have to stop it just to check because once it starts dripping out, we know we're at the right level. Now it does look like it's pumping a hell of a lot in, but it really isn't pumping as much as it kind of looks. Now, as you can see, we're coming out, so we know we're okay now. So that now is the two back oils done. I know I've only shown one, but you get the idea of how to do it. It's very straightforward how to do the other oil. It's just if, you're, if you've got it jacked up, <laughs> underneath it can just be very messy but it can be very messy even on a lift to be honest right i'm just going to tighten up that bolt we'll move the camera and we'll do the front the front transfer box and the gearbox they're actually both together so it's nice and easy to do and then that's it right so as you can see we've got the gearbox here and we've got the transfer box here now this actually shares the same oil so you only need to top up one which tops up both of them which is really handy so even though there is a there is a drain plug here but I'm just going to drain the plug from the uh, gearbox. I'm also going to drain it from here as well. But just top it up from the actual one side from the gearbox. Again, vitally important you get the right oil. I'm using all genuine oils on this, like I said before. That one seems a lot easier. Now that one actually, to be fair, doesn't look too bad, but we're going to change it anyway. And that tool was a H14, you can see that there, the camera's showing it. And it's a H10 for the transfer box. I would actually like to open both these together, but the thing isn't big enough. So what I'm going to do is shove that on top like that. I think I've blocked you on the camera now, but I'm just undoing the transfer box one just to make there's anything hiding in here. A little bit came out. Now just tighten that back up. So it is handy how, where are we? Here, which is the filler which I don't know if you can see it just there on camera. That will fill up the gearbox as well as the transfer box. So it kind of does both of them at once, which is handy for us. See if this will play ball as nice as the other one. I'm just using a wobbly bar, because a wobbly bar, they are absolutely fantastic. They'll allow me to get into there. It's not work, so hopefully I can just get it in here, maybe. Put 
this one back. It's important before you fill it because you'll be taking a long time to fill it otherwise. Right, I'm going to get set up, we'll turn the camera back on and fill her up. Now you can't quite see but Sean's going to hook up the pump now onto the batteries. So we can go red on the plus. Just put it on here. And then black on the minus, or the negative. Oh, did it pop off? Right, he's going to turn the pump on, which is just here in a second. And what we're going to look for, where are we? Just here for it to fill up. So, put her on. There we go. Same again, we're going to wait until the fluid's coming out. This is obviously going to take a, a lot longer because we've got a bigger gearbox. We've also got to fill up the transfer box as well. So as you can see, it is now leaking out, so we know we're full. And what also is a good thing to do, especially, especially because we've obviously got a special four-wheel drive system on this and we've changed all the fluid. Well, even when you change the fluid in anyone, it's best just to take it up and down the road for a drive. Make sure it's going into all the gears. Do it nice and slowly. Let everything heat up first. Don't, don't try and force it into gear. Just go nice and slowly. Make sure it's going into gear nice and smoothly. Once it's warmed up, kind of give it a little bit more stick and make sure it's not grinding or doing anything. Because if it is, then stop straight away. Get it sorted because otherwise if you leave it, you could have serious problems. So considering that's supposed to be a full service video, I think we did quite well. So yeah, that's really it. Obviously, we couldn't service it because of the head gasket. It's just pointless doing that. But nevertheless, we have done it. So that's changing all the oils, the gearbox oil, the diff oils, the, the rear diff oils, gearbox oil, everything. Really simple, just take your time, but make sure you get the right oil. Especially on these Volkswagens and Audis, they're just, they're, they really are quite sensitive to oil. So just buy the right stuff, it's a little bit more expensive, but then you know you're not going to have any problems, so it's cheap in the long run. And that really is essentially it. So look, hope it helps, thumbs up and subscribe. Don't forget, check out, our and uh, get your hands dirty. See you for the next one. Don't forget, get your hands dirty. See you for the next one.